In this demonstration, we're going to look at how to create special table fields uh, in the salesperson the purchaser table. And we're going to use this for the sales transaction table, which we created in the previous demonstration. This will ease the calculation of sales by salespeople. The flow fields are effectively temporary fields created by the system and they're used for aggregate functions. So you may want to dynamically create a subtotal, for example, based on uh, information that you already have. So first of all, we're going to type in the data into our sales transaction table. So we have a number of transactions to work with. Okay, good. And now we've closed the table and we're going to work on table 13 at the top of the list. The salesperson purchase a table. We need to add a new field to this table. So we type in field 50,000 with a field name of sales. Just correct that there. That's better. And we'll use decimal. So in the properties of the sales field, we specify that this will be a flow field. And by doing this, this gives us slightly different properties and allows us to now perform calculated formulae. So we'll work out the data to be temporarily stored in this area on the fly as the table is opened. This flow field will calculate a decimal value which will be returned and used in this field. Now that took quite some time to find the field class and to alter it to flow field because as you're still trying to develop an understanding of the property inspector, you will, it, it is hard to find, you, you will try to uh, get there eventually. So here we're setting our salesperson code as a filter. Because the, the previous step made sure that the sales flow field only adds the amount from the sales transaction table that has the same salesperson code as the current code in the salesperson, the purchaser table. So what we're doing here is specifying the salesperson code uh, to be a field, and we'll use the field called code. And this will filter. Now in the key section, as you can see here, we're creating a secondary key, allowing us to be able to sort the records in a different way. We're going to try to sort our fields now in relation to the salesperson code. And you can see the results here. 
So you'll notice that the sales field calculates the value from the amount of the field in the sales transaction table by salesperson code. But the, the uh, drill down isn't working though, and that's because there is no drill down page defined so far in the sales transaction table. We can add it in, but it's beyond the scope of this demonstration to do so. But what we do need to do now is to create a flow filter. I'll save out of that. And now we'll look up table 13. And we can add now a new uh, field at the end called type filter. It's an option and we can use this option to be able, as I say, to limit the data down and specify different filters. In our option string, we need to define what our filter will be. Okay, so now we go back into the sales table, into the properties. Notice the calculation formula already is looking at the salesperson code. But we need to add in now a filter to use the type filter that we've just created. Now, it doesn't work straight away because we've got to make sure that we're referring to properties that we set up in the previous table. If you remember, the three options we had were the general ledger, the item or resource. So that needs to be reflected here. So a little bit of tweaking just to uh, marry these two up. If I go back into the properties now, let's try it again. And we set also the salesperson code this time to field and ensure that it's actually running code this time. Save the alterations and we should now be able to run the table. And this completes demonstration three.